Plaza Metrópolis, ¿cómo están? Yo feliz de empezar el programa y como siempre recorriendo la ciudad. Les cuento que hoy hemos preparado notas muy interesantes de cómics, de teatro y también tendremos una interesante exposición. Metrópolis empieza así. que el ilustrador de The Walking Dead llegó a nuestro país por primera vez como parte del Lima Comics 2013. El equipo de Metrópolis conversó con él y nos contó los secretos para realizar los dibujos más expresivos y terroríficos de zombies. Hello friends of Metropolis, I'm Martha Sudam, the Zombie King, um, the artist for Marvel Zombies, I'm working on The Walking Dead as well. How did I get involved in comics? Uh, when I was five years old, uh, I was burned very badly. Um, they didn't think I was going to live, I was in a hospital for a year. and. Uh, And my parents, as is customary, parents bring you flowers, they bring you candy, and they bring you magazines. And uh, my, my parents brought me comic books, so I started to read comic books. And uh, as soon as I got out of the hospital, as soon as my hands started to heal a little bit, then I started drawing them. And uh, as is traditional with, uh, with many kids, a lot of kids draw, and some stick to it, and some of them give, them up, give it up. For me, I was one of the guys that stuck to it, so... Uh, later on, many years later, fast forward to you're 18 years old and you're getting ready to leave high school and to go into a profession and you do some self-analysis and you uh, try to figure out what it is that you know how to do so you know what kind of profession you want to go into and what I knew how to do, I knew, I knew comic books. Okay, so why zombies for me? Um, Oh, well, I'm actually classically trained. There are, I think in our industry, in the comic industry, there are two of us that I know of that are classically trained. One is myself, one is Alex Ross. And myself, I kind of come from the school of uh, the Renaissance School. There was a, uh, in New York City, they recreated, based on the notes from the 16th century, they created the school of Michelangelo, Leonardo da Vinci, and Raphael, uh, based on notes of uh, the classes from the school in the 16th century. They put this school together. There was a, a duplicate of that school. Uh, that school was uh, about four blocks from my house. Um, as soon as I found out about the school, I went and signed up when I joined the school. Part of the curriculum is uh, you have to do a lot of work with cadavers. So you have to do a lot of work with dead bodies. Um, we, the, at the medical institute, uh, the medical students had access to the cadavers during the day. And during the evening, we artists had access to them. So I had to go to the, the morgue basically in the evening and uh, it's a giant refrigerator, it's very cold. There are bodies hanging on hooks from the ceiling and then some bodies on the tables. And uh, basically we do autopsies. And uh, so for, for me as a, an anatomy student, I had to draw them, paint them and then sculpt the bodies as well. Um, so I loved comics, I loved horror movies and I loved classical studies and the Renaissance period. So you put all those together. So I work on Marvel Zombies, I work on The Walking Dead as well. Um, because when I, well, all the way back in 1972, I started working for DC Comics. And immediately, immediately after that, I started working for Heavy Metal and Heavy Metal Magazine was distributed all across the world. So it went to all the countries in Europe. Um, so back in the 1970s, my work was distributed across the world. It just so happens that with Marvel Zombies, Marvel Zombies was the biggest trade, I'm told was the biggest best-selling trade of all time for Marvel. So it was the best-selling trade book that they ever had. So that went all over the world. So that made me, well, made, you know, the, the, the project became very famous. So my work became well known across the world. And then from that, um, I kind of got known as the zombie guy, then the zombie king. You know, the kids would call me the zombie guy and then somehow that morphed into the zombie king online. And anytime anyone wants, anybody wants an artist to do zombie work, I'm the guy, I'm the go-to guy. So. I'm 
online. If, if they go on, if people want to find out, uh, see more of my work and find out where my work is, you could just Google my name on Google and maybe three million pictures, <laughs> three million uh, sites and articles will come up. There's a lot of interviews on, uh, on YouTube.com as well. Um, they can go to our website, which is arthasidam.com. They can go there and uh, there's a lot of bio material there and a lot of pictures. Or you can go to your local comic store and, and, and buy some comics. de Miraflores se presenta una interesante exposición denominada Los placeres de la imaginación con la obra de Sabino Springer. Aquí podemos ver la pasión que tuvo con la cultura peruana, sobre todo con la precolombina y colonial, pero también su obra nos habla de los personajes que lo rodearon. Hola amigos de Metrópolis, soy Augusto del Valle y voy a conversar con ustedes sobre la exposición de Sabine Springer, Los placeres de la imaginación. La exposición pone en las paredes un lenguaje visual, que es un lenguaje de la pintura, obviamente, pero que eh, lo que hace es poner en evidencia una serie de coordenadas sobre lo que significa el lenguaje plástico, eh, la composición, los distintos um, temas. suele asociar mucho la obra al artista. Eh, si bien esto es importante, a mí me ha interesado eh, como, como curador resaltar sobre todo los lenguajes. Claro, uno puede pensar en la vida del artista. El artista nació en 1913, falleció en 2006 y pertenece a una generación anterior a la, a la modernista propiamente dicha, pero posterior al indigenismo, es decir, de los nacidos en esta época entre el 10 y el 20. La cronología plantea, digamos, la entrada, la cosa biográfica, un poco, eh, ver un poco el mix que hace, porque es un artista que tiene aparentemente muchos lenguajes de la pintura, eh, pero luego la, la propia exposición desarrolla este criterio, ¿no? de, de, de ir de lo figurativo al abstracto, del abstracto a lo figurativo, y, y es simpático eso, porque hay pinturas que tú las ves que son figurativas cuando te acercas, por ejemplo, en la zona de la síntesis que está más allá, y de pronto también ves esas pinturas con los mismos colores, pero en, en abstracto, como que, y, y están emparentados visualmente, ¿no? Entonces es como que bien interesante ver esos procesos que pocas veces se, se ven en, en, en exposiciones. No se olviden, amigos de Metrópolis, aquí en el himno de Miraflores, en la intervención de Angamos con la Avenida de Quito. pero regresa para contarles del unipersonal Adanes versus Evas. Aquí, usando las palabras que arman tantos 